Our gospel reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 9, beginning with verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothing became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say because they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and hovered above them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders. Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I come to you today with a sermon entitled, God Will Never Leave You. Today, as many of you know, is Transfiguration Sunday. It's given the name primarily because of the gospel reading for today. Here we find Peter, James, and John gathered at the top of a mountain where Jesus asked them to accompany him for a time of prayer and meditation. And while they were there, Jesus was transfigured before their very eyes into something they could hardly describe. When asked, the best they could come up with is, well, Jesus' clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. Seeing this transfiguration of Jesus take place before their very eyes, along with the appearance of Moses and Elijah, it caused them to become terrified. But to their credit, they didn't do what should have come natural to most people. Amazingly enough, Peter, James, and John did not run away in fright. As they stood there not knowing what to do and not understanding what all was taking place, Peter broke the silence and he said, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elisha. And as Peter finished his statement, a cloud overshadowed them. And from that cloud, the voice of God came and he said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And when the cloud had lifted, everything was back to normal. Moses and Elijah were nowhere to be seen. And Jesus was no longer this dazzling white image that stood before them. All of this took place to give Peter, James, and John an opportunity to see who Jesus truly was. Though they had been with him for a while now, though they had seen all the miracles and how Jesus had blessed people along the way, they never really got to understand or to see who Jesus truly was until that moment. And by their not running away, God blessed them with the privilege of seeing Jesus in all of his glory. By staying there, we also had an opportunity to see one more thing. We had an opportunity to see the character of Peter, James, and John. They didn't know what was going on. 
They didn't understand what was happening with Jesus, but they did know one thing, that they would not leave their friend. They stood by his side through this entire ordeal. They stood by his side, afraid for their own lives possibly, afraid of what was going on, not understanding what was going on, but they stood there with him. And it gave us an opportunity to see that though their mind was probably telling them, run for fear, run for safety, their heart said, no, I can't leave him. If something happens to him, we need to be there. Beloved, this was their moment to show God what they were truly made of. God gave them the heart, the ability, the mind, the desire to stand and never leave Jesus alone. Similarly, in our Old Testament reading, here we find a situation that almost models that one. Here we have the prophet Elijah knowing that his time on earth was drawing to a close, knowing that God was soon to call him home to glory. Elisha, his apprentice, also knew this. And no matter how many times Elijah tried to tell Elisha to stay in one place while I go and finish the work that God has called me to do, Elisha said, no, I will not leave your side. I am going to be with you to the end. Even when prophets came to him from every region that they went into, and increasing numbers constantly said, don't you know that the Lord is going to take up your master today? Elisha did not allow their words to dissuade him, discourage him, or to chase him away. All he did was he looked at them and he said, yes, I know. Now keep quiet. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to stay with my friend no matter what happens. He stayed with Elijah until the Lord carried him up to heaven in a whirlwind. Now in this passage of scripture, we had a chance to see, similar to the apostles, Elisha's character. We had a chance to see what was in Elisha's heart. Knowing that Elijah was going to be taken away, Elisha could have said, okay, well, my time with him is done. I'm going off about my own business and maybe start my own ministry as a prophet somewhere else. Others, interestingly enough, have argued that, well, the only reason why Elisha hung around Elijah was because he wanted to get that cloak that he was going to use to separate waters and do all kinds of miraculous things with. But if we look back at the relationship that the two of those men had, it was more like a father and a son, a mutual love, as opposed to a teacher and a student or a mentor and a mentee. And though we look at this from the side of Elijah, who was loving and devoted to God, he also cared enough about Elisha to not want him to have to experience his being taken away because he knew that would be a heartbreaking experience for him. But there was something special about that moment. Knowing that God was in the middle of it, knowing that this was all God's work, made it a lot easier to handle. And when Elijah was taken up in a world when Elisha called out to his father, but he watched in awe as God completed his plan for Elijah's life. Beloved people of God, each of these accounts of relationships which were formed between Jesus, Peter, James, and John, and the relationship that was formed between Elijah and Elisha is actually very similar to the relationship that God desires to have with us. In our good times, in our challenging times, in our struggles, and in all that we go through, God constantly reminds us over and over again that he will never leave us or forsake us. 
God will never abandon us in our time of need, in our times of sorrow, in our challenging times. And as I say that, I'm reminded of a poem that I love. It's one of my favorites. I got a whole bunch of them, but this is one of my favorites. It's called Footprints in the Sand. And it's one of those poems that I cannot read aloud because it always chokes me up. So I asked somebody else to do it for me. And so, listen to the poem as it's read now. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life. For each scene, he noticed two steps of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Even hearing it read, it still um, touches you. During those troublesome times, God carries you. When life feels like it's completely out of control, God will never, ever leave you alone. Beloved, on this Transfiguration Sunday, we have an opportunity to see how and what is in our own hearts. Imagine this, when we talked about transfiguration, Jesus is so seen as being transfigured, transformed, changed into something that they didn't recognize. I looked up the definition of transfiguration and it states as follows, a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. Though this definition describes the outer appearance, the question that we wrestle with is what's going on on the inside? What if you are transfigured on the outside based on what's in your heart? Could you imagine what the world will look like? Beloved, think about your own journey. Think about your own relationship with God. If you were to be transfigured today based on what's in your heart, what would we see on the outside? If by chance what you see is something that you believe is pleasing to God, then by all means continue the life that you're living and encourage others along the way. But if by chance what you see on the outside in that transfiguration moment is something that needs a little tweaking or a little correcting or something that's not pleasing to God, then I invite you to spend a little time reevaluating your life. Spend a little time in prayer. Spend a little time reading the word of God and let that be the thing that gets you back on track. We are now about to enter into the season of Lent. And on Wednesday will be our starting point. For those of us who will do so, we'll receive ashes. And then 
That'll mark the beginning of our journey. And the ashes, you don't have to do it to still start your journey. And for the next 40 days, we're going to set aside that time to work on ourselves, to help us to be the best version of ourselves that God had initially created us to be. And so, beloved, I encourage you to take a good look at what's going on inside your heart. There's an old song that says, beauty's only skin deep. And I can make myself look as nice as I want with all the makeup and hair products and things to make myself look absolutely stunning as a man, of course. But that does nothing to change the character of my heart. Beloved, wipe away all the masks and let's talk about what's going on inside the heart. And then by the end of this Lenten journey, let us continue to work on ourselves because it's not just a seasonal thing, it's a lifelong journey. And know that the best part of it, you don't have to do it alone. God is with you every step of the way. Amen? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for the reminder that we are never alone. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, you're always there. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, for reminding us that there are those times when the burdens are so heavy that you have to carry us through. And we thank you for that as well. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.